Hello, I'm Craig from Consultant Advisory. This tutorial series covers the Excel 2019 Expert Curriculum. Download Microsoft's example files linked in the description to work through them together as we continue Section 1.2, Preparing Workbooks for Collaboration. Let's get started. To begin, what they would like us to do is to confirm that calculations are automatic and that iterative calculations are turned off. Now this is generally the default, so we'll confirm that that's the case, and that is in our options. So we're going to hit Alt F to go into File, T for Options, and then F for Formulas. So I could have navigated that with my mouse, but uh, I'm, I'm lazy and want to do it quickly. Uh, so I can confirm here that my calculations are indeed automatic and that iterative calculations are indeed turned off. So that is now confirmed. Now we can hit Control O, open up our 1-2-C workbook. Now once we do this, you'll notice that Microsoft is giving us a circular reference warning. Uh, so, and, and that's because circular references are usually a mistake and not something that's wanted. So it's given me this warning that it's found one. I'm going to click OK. And I'll move this so we can see the whole window together. All right, the uh, other thing uh, Excel has done is it's put a circular reference warning in the bottom left-hand corner of my screen here. As well, it has these two blue arrows, or this blue double-ended arrow that's showing me uh, where the circular calculation is occurring. Now, if you're not familiar with circular references, essentially what it is, it's a situation where um, the an input for a cell is after one of the outputs for it. So it's basically taking information that is being calculated inside its cell and then re-looping it through the formulas. And normally that's not something you want to happen. Uh, there are a few examples. Uh, so in finance, uh, when we work, for example, with uh, calculating a revolver, so that's a revolving line of credit that a company can, can pull out money when they need to, and they can put back cash back in. So what happens with a revolver is if in the middle of a period I pull an extra $100 off of my revolver, well, I actually have to pay additional amount of interest on that money I pulled off. So now I actually have to pull out a little bit more money to pay that interest. And once I pulled out a little bit more money, there's now interest on that money as well. And so there, there continues to be a little bit more interest every time I borrow some. And uh, we'll use a circular calculation in order to get that uh, estimated to a high level of, level of accuracy. But that's not something that most users will do. So Excel will flag it as an error. And so what we're going to do in this particular example is we're going to change the formula calculation method to manual and we'll turn on iterative calculations because you'll notice Excel has flagged this, but there's no actual value in this cell where the iterative calculation occurs. So let's go back into our options, Alt F, T, and then I'm going to hit F again to go into formulas. I'm going to change this from automatic to manual. Uh, now I can use my mouse or because that M is underlined, I'm going to hit Alt M and uh, change it that way. And I can also toggle on my iterative calculations by hitting on Alt-I, or I could use my mouse to tick that box on or off. So now calculations are manual, my iterative calculations are on, and Excel actually gives you a little bit of additional flexibility with iterative. You can tell Excel how many times you'd like it to iterate a calculation or the, uh, the impact that the iterative calculation is going to have. So you can prevent it from taking up a lot of time doing these iterative calculations if you want. We'll click OK here. And you'll notice that this still is showing 0. OK, so our next step here is to select cell C6. And uh, we're going to manually calculate the formula result. Now there's a couple ways that we can do this. Uh, typically, most users would hit F9. And once that's done, we now have a calculation that's occurred, and we, we have a value in the cell that wasn't here before. The alternative way is often in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see this calculate. Uh, and so we can click that button, and uh, that also performs a calculation function. So to, to give a quick example, let's make a couple other changes here. So let's change our expenses to 850000 You'll notice that when I did that, gross profit didn't change and profit sharing didn't change as well. Uh, and that's because when I hit enter, Excel didn't calculate anymore. Uh, it'll only do it when I tell it to. So let's have it uh, calculate again. I'm going to hit F9. And once I've done that, gross profit is updated. Profit sharing is updated as well. 
Now, the need for manual calculations is probably a little bit less now with modern computers because they're so powerful. Uh, 10 or 15 years ago, uh, it, it wasn't unusual to have a workbook that uh, would take a second or two to calculate uh, because of all the different links that were inside there. And you didn't want every time you're entering some data and hitting enter to have to wait a couple seconds before you could go on to the next cell. So frequently what you would do is you would turn off the calculation, uh, automatic calculation, and, and then you would make all the changes you wanted, hit F9 and everything would get updated. There are still some, some purposes or some, some situations currently where you still may want that to happen, uh, but it's, it's a much less common event in modern computers than it, than it used to be 10 or 15 years ago when they were being pushed really hard uh, with processing power. So that wraps up this particular section. Let's uh, move on to uh, our fourth and final set of examples. So one of the benefits of working through these textbooks, even though I've used Excel for a long time, is it helps introduce me to new features as, that they, as they get introduced. And so this next section uh, is rather new for me. Uh, and what it does is it takes Microsoft's comments system in Excel. And so for those of you that have been using uh, Excel for a while, you're probably familiar with this type of comment. Uh, it's this little yellow box. There's a little red flag in the corner of our cell. And uh, we can make a note that... Uh, uh, to a future user that uh, this is because of a problem in COGS. Uh, that's kind of nonsense, but uh, I can make this little note, and then when I the next person sees this, they'll notice this flag, and they can see this kind of uh, ugly-looking comment pop up. So these have now been changed. Um, while you can still do a comment, this is now officially called a note and comments are this new system that we're about to learn. So I'm, gonna, um, I'm going to delete this so that it's not in place. And now what you'll notice is these purple comments, which is now in the upper left-hand corner here. So what they're asking us to do is to add a comment. So before I use my shortcut of Shift F2 to add that yellow comment, to add a new comment, we can do it a couple ways here. So let's go to review and I can select a new comment right here from the ribbon. And if I was to do that with my keyboard, I would go Alt, R, and then C to add a new comment. I'm going to escape. Um, for those of the who used to add comments by Shift F2, um, we can now hit Control Shift F2, and it now adds one of these threaded comments for us. So uh, let's go, wow, this is my first threaded comment. Now, if I hit Enter, I don't exit the comment. It just adds another line. Uh, if I want to uh, submit it uh, or, or, or enter it, I can hit Control Enter. And now I am uh, out of the comment. I can hit Escape and go back to the worksheet as I was before. So the benefit of these comments is they're a little bit more collaborative. And if you've been using Microsoft Word, you'll notice that these comments are much more similar to the commenting system that's in place there. So what I can do here is now I can show the comments. And what will happen is on my sidebar, I can see all of the comments gathered together that are on this worksheet, which is kind of handy. Before in Excel, I could show the comments, uh, which are now called notes, uh, but they would be kind of overlaid over top of the data in the workbook. Now I can see all of these new threaded comments all in one place. I can use next and previous comment to work through them on the list here, as it's asked me to do here with my next uh, objective. Um, so we can use these previous and next. Uh, I haven't found a, a keyboard shortcut for these yet, other than going right through the Alt R uh, and the N. So it's a little bit uh, laborious. I'm hoping I can discover a shortcut that'll let me just quickly skip from one comment to the next. Uh, but for now, that will do. They would next like us to navigate to the comment we added. Uh, so I have my comments here over in the sidebar. So here's the comment that I had added, and it would like me to edit it. So I'm going to hit the edit function here um, and to say, well, um, not really, comma, but quite close. Uh, be a little bit more accurate here. And uh, they'd also like us to reply to the comment in cell B3. So let's go to the cell B3 comment. So I can either go to previous comment or next until I have that highlighted, or I can select it here on my sidebar. Uh, and I can see that one of my colleagues 
uh, hypothetically speaking here, has uh, asked me um, if there's any reason for the values are the small side. And so now I can add a reply to Paul. Oh, I need to save that comment, that change first. Uh, so now I'm here to the comment in cell B3, and I can say, Paul, um, I think your team suffers from poor leadership. And that's the reason for those. So that would probably not be a comment that I would want to add. Uh, what will happen with these threaded comments is, is Paul will actually get a notification if Paul was actually in my work group uh, that I've replied to his comment. So I'm going to uh, change that here because I don't want to lose my imaginary job here. And uh, Paul, I think in cell B3, I can say uh, unseasonable C cold weather. All right, so there's a reasonable excuse that may or may not hold water. Um, so I will control enter to add that to his comment. Um, and so, so these are effectively outstanding. Uh, once uh, we have a comment in place, we can actually uh, delete it or resolve it. So if it's deleted, it's gone. But if it's resolved, it's no longer outstanding, but it's still um, still visible here. So let's resolve that particular thread. So you'll notice that it's it's now um, no longer showing as, uh, it's shaded out effectively. So I can go back and reopen it, or I can just delete it. So let's go ahead and uh, we will uh, delete the thread. And so now that comment that I had added no longer shows up. So while these are, are new to me, I can I can see some value. Um, and it's a more powerful tool than the old comments, which of course are now called notes. In fact, you can still see them here and, and add them through the uh, toolbar there uh, and, and still use them in the previous way. So that's everything for section 1.2 in, in this particular section of the Excel expert study guide. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your time and sticking uh, with me through it all. Uh, I'd sure appreciate it if you uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, what I could do better. Uh, a thumbs up is always great. And of course, uh, subscribing and sharing to other people who might find this uh, beneficial would be wonderful again. Thanks so much for watching. This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory.